Oh, Rick, I'm so scared. Oh, I don't know what to do, Rick. Oh, Morty, don't worry about it, Morty. We're just gonna go. We're gonna leave. We're gonna go to Bendigo. Oh, everything you thought you knew about Rick and Morty upended in one episode. We are done Season 7, and while this is not a complete review of Season 7, I'm really just going to do Episode 10, and I think everybody got it all wrong, and I'm here to explain to you why. So this is Our Reviews Will Kill You. I am the man you may know as Z, and I am here to talk to you about Rick and Morty. I like this episode. I feel like I've taken some heat because I didn't like the, the last episode enough, and I recapped it too much. So, what I'm going to do, I, I see the last episode with Bigfoot and the Pope, it was kind of like a standalone episode with some jokes and it ha had no real deeper meaning and there wasn't a lot to interpret in it. But this episode, I think, is interesting. And I especially think that the interpretations of it are interesting because I think they got it wrong. So, let's take a look. This here is Inverse and Rick and Morty finally solves its last great mystery. So this one was very different in the sense it, it, it it's strange. So the setup is is uh, Rick and Morty are looking for something to do because they're not scared of anything anymore. They've seen too much until this guy entices them with the fear hole that only has them see whatever the thing is they fear the most. And if you survive, you get to put your picture up on the wall. So... What ends up happening is is different because it's not exactly true. And what I want to explain here, and and this will have full spoilers, so let's let's just go right into it. This is called Fear No Mort, and one of the writers said something like, "Everyone's always searching for love and deeper meaning in life. We're having these beautiful adventures." But where are our hearts? Where's our intention? This season's done a great job of incorporating a lot of groundedness in the actual story about the human condition. And they're going to talk about Rick and Diane because what you start to see is Rick's greatest fear is that Diane, that Diane's back and then you can't lose her again, right? But this is a fake Diane. But what it all boils down to is that it's not real none of it's real the whole thing is real or not real it's all it's morty's challenge morty's fear morty's fear is that he depends too much on rick like what what is he without rick what can he do without rick but you don't get that till the end so everything you see with diane and and summer and all that other stuff it's all it's all nonsense none of it was true so we this is just Morty's interpretation of what Diane would be. So you're not actually getting Diane, and I think Diane is missing the point. What really starts to happen towards the end of it, and let's go to Screen Rant. I think Screen Rant also got this a little bit wrong. To me, this is a super meta commentary on whether or not they think the fans will accept the changes in Rick and Morty that they've had to do because of Justin Roiland. Now, why do I think this? Well, there's clearly a point. Ooh, there we go. There's clearly a point where um, they say so they they keep figuring out. They keep thinking they're getting out of the hole, and then they don't know if life is real or not, or if they've even gotten out of the hole. It's a recurring thing that just keeps happening. He's like, "You, Morty, so help me, we better get out of this hole because if we we don't get, we, we can't be another two seasons in this hole," and. That's where I think the writers are saying to you that they feel like they can't just keep repeating the same stories. They need to move on from some of them, but they're insecure about whether or not the audience will accept this with the new voices, with the new direction and writing, and how do they ultimately feel about the show itself. So they make that meta commentary where they break the fourth wall. And then you have Rick and Morty you know, Morty finally comes to face that he needs to move, move on from it, and he wants to know his fear is Rick is his fear is that Rick views him as replaceable. But to me, that's really 
the them saying that the audience could find Rick and Morty replaceable by someone else. Like, is are the voices truly replaceable? Did they re do a good job of replacing Rick and Morty? And I think it's the reason why they ended with this episode as opposed to ending with the Rick Prime one is because they want to wrap up the Rick Prime. They want to move on from that. We've talked about how uh, the o they don't like the overarching story. We've dug into the writers before in some of my previous reviews where you can palpably sense that they're insecure about what they're writing, that, they're, that they passively, aggressively might even hate the audience because the audience is, is trying to tell them what they want and they don't want to hear it. They want to do their own stories. They like those earlier seasons that were different, that they like, but the fans have not responded in, in course. And now... They have an opportunity to lose everything because if people don't accept what they've changed, then the show is over. They, in fact, there was a recent news article that came out that said that they have a full 10, they have three more seasons planned out that they want to do, but will they actually, in fact, get them, especially based off what happened with the ratings of this season and what, what do people have in mind? You know, will they be able to continue doing this show or will it just death spiral into nothing? And I think ultimately the fear was the writer's fear. It's Dan Harmon's fear. It's it's the whole staff's fear of like, will we be, are we replaceable? Is there another show that will come and take our stage? Will take our, our voice, our, our audience? And I, I think that's the meta commentary that they feel like they're being replaced and because if you just dig into the story itself, there's not that much there. And what I what I found intriguing is that Rick can't bring himself to jump in the hole. He doesn't want to. <clears throat> the man who's afraid of nothing knows what happened to Morty and is proud of Morty for what he did. But if he went in, he might he might he's already been shook by the death of of Rick Prime. I don't think he could handle it uh, mentally. And I think that's kind of indicative of the show itself. C could, you know, the entire staff handle, you know, how do they move forward when they lose one of the creators of the show? So to me, this is a meta commentary because you know how they like to do their story trains, their story circles, all that stuff and more. But I really, really think that this one was, once they started breaking the fourth wall, it made me think oh my gosh they're insecure about their own show they're talk they're not talking about rick and morty i mean they're talking about the show but they're not talking about the characters so i think that was pretty interesting especially when they decided like you know this episode or this season and i'm not going to review the whole season but it's it's very it is very i would say experimental it reminded me a little bit of the first season it was kind of all over the place. It was very dark in times. It did have some more laid back episodes. I think it did have one of the episodes that was is like pretty bad, but overall, I think it was a really good season. And you know, I don't make much of the Mister Poopy Butthole Portal Gun to replace himself. I, I don't take that as much of anything other than like, okay, uh, w w you know, whatever. It's just like a continuation of that story. But I, I again. It's all about the meta commentary because I think that the, they said, you know, let, let's address it. Let's put the elephant out there. What, what do we fear? You know, can we change the show? Can we survive? Can we move forward without Justin Roiland? Because, I mean, it's such a huge, huge loss to the show. And uh, what do you guys think? Am I totally off base here? Have I lost my mind? I think it's... I mean, with how meta this season has been, I think it's very indicative of that. I think it's funny that none of the the uh, the rags here, none of the industry rags, screen rant, none of these guys even mention the fact that it's it's really insecurity about the show and whether or not the show can continue, will continue. Obviously, they announced that this is the you know uh, episode ten of the season, and they're like, "Well, like, hang in with us, guys. We we have an overarching plan for three more seasons. We're gonna make it to season 10. And but but again, are are we in it? I, I personally am. I'm still a fan. I, I like the direction they're going. I like where they're headed, and I like the insecurity because it, it this episode made me think. And maybe that's what I didn't like about the previous episode versus this one. The previous episode was fun. 
I like Bigfoot. I like the Pope it was, with the Vikings. The whole thing was fine. It wasn't the greatest episode on Earth, but it wasn't bad. Uh, but this one made me think. And I like it when they make me think. And I think that's the times they have their best episodes. And, and what's good about Rick and Morty is you need those filler episodes like pr the previous week in order to get yourself to a place where you think about this one. Because on one layer, you think this entire episode is about Rick and his relationship with Diane and what he's, you know, the fact that he still wants her back or whatever it is. But in reality, that has nothing to do with what we're looking at. You know, that was all just a red herring, if you will. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. I will take it back. We'll t let's have a discussion about this one. I'm also going to do a full review of the whole entire season. I'm probably going to bring Noob Noob in. And you can catch what our thoughts are together of the whole season as we break it down. Again, uh, you can catch our full-length audio podcast. We stream it here on YouTube, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Times, Friday nights. We do it there. And you can catch it on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all those places and more. Please join us. You can super chat us. Whatever you want to do, we're down. Uh, we also have a great Christmas tree battle where you can win some uh, Amazon gift cards and some movies and stuff. So let us uh, come join. Have fun. Love all y'all. Thank you so much for listening. But I'm on to the next one.